the 2022-2023 Brooklyn Nets season outlook off of unceremonious bow out of the playoffs uh, for this gentrification franchise. Um, you know, let's get into some of some of the details for them. Kyrie allegedly is back. Um, we're hoping for a, a Joe Harris, healthy Joe Harris season. Kevin Durant requested trades. He is also back. Um, ben Simmons, will he play? TBD. Nick Claxton as their center. Um, imagine he misses uh, another another whole season. I can't. I can't imagine that. I don't even want to uh, imagine that because that's that's bad for business. That's bad for him. He's very <laughs> talented. I would like to at least see him play, even if it's for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, the Nets have added, you know, TJ Warren, affectionately known as MJ Warren in the bubble. I don't know if you guys remember that guy. He hasn't played in two years, but the last time we saw him, he was averaging 45 points a game. Um, Royce O'Neal, um, kind of the the the, the do it all kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, li- I like Royce O'Neal. He he did it all for the Jazz, and you know, he's gonna be able to to be around a lot more talent if they play on, on this Nets team and, and be able the, to the, the Jazz had the Jazz had Royce O'Neal trying to guard like three niggas at one time, bro. Yo, Royce O'Neal, yo, he won me a fantasy league. I'll tell you that. So I said Royce O'Neal, shout out to Royce O'Neal, man. Um, Nick Claxton, he's resigned, obviously. Kessler Edwards, Patty Mills, Edmund Summer, and Alondis Williams are the additions. They've lost Andre Drummond, who is a meme waiting to happen. It don't matter where he's going to be. So we, we will look out for all of that Bulls meme content. Bruce Brown, a big, big loss, I think, for this team. Um, you know, they probably tried to mitigate it with some Royce O'Neal, but I mean, Bruce Brown, you know, I think he was kind of the heart and soul of this team. And then Goran Dragic, the corpse of him is now with the Bulls. Hopefully he's healthy. So, Sean, I mean, what do you what do you what do you take, you know, for these these additions and these subtractions for these these Brooklyn Nets? Yeah, for, first things first, please, if you do um, you know, support that draft season podcast or you enjoy this content that we do put out, please make sure you are liked and subscribed. Um, drop a comment, interact with us, please. We will we do appreciate it, and everything is um on the up and up. Obviously, um the Brooklyn Nets this season, the um the over the win, um win total over under is at 50 and a half wins. Um, if you want to place a nice little you know NBA title odds, they are at plus 700 on DraftKings. So obviously the Brooklyn Nets, you know, um, one of, like you said, the, the most unceremonious, you know, sweep and exit of the, in the first round against the uh, Boston Celtics last season. And it's, it's really bad when, you know, you make a Boston team seem kind of likable, which is kind of what the Nets did last season, um, you know, in, in general, but, yeah, it's you know going going into the season, we there was a lot of questions just about the roster last season, about it not making sense, about you know the pieces not really fitting together. You have the problem of this team having uh, literally the worst continuity and and you know zero just team chemistry at all. So I mean, before we do get any further, I did have a couple questions just about the Nets here that I did want to you know just actually. Um, start with so I mean Raz, we talk about this, but off the top, obviously a lot of the um same people are gonna re- are gonna be returning. We'll talk about some of the um additions that they did have on this team, but I'm gonna start with this. Um, especially in the NBA, um, I think the, we know the importance of the superstar is integral, and you know with you know 15 man rosters, you know it might be a under a unheralded or underrated aspect of team building, but your best players. I mean, your team does take the, the identity of your best players in general. So last season, um, you know, kind of just like this team just seemed like like 10 man heartless, um, no soul, um, not a lot of energy. Um, you look at like those 2019 Nets team and how much fun um, a much less or a, a way less talented team, um, how much energy and, and chemistry that team had um, and, and what they brought. So, I mean, Raz, my first question is, who who is the leader? on this team like somebody has to you know i I think you know when we get to the lakers eventually i think like you hear like a lot of stuff you know pat brev pat bev brings to the table um leadership like who's gonna be the guy that gets you know who's gonna yell at guys and and really establish that um you know way of consistency and the right way of doing things on this team because obviously we talk about the next team we talk about you know Kyrie irving kevin durant two of the best scorers of this generation 
Um, just two absolutely ridiculously skilled. Um, if you are a fan of basketball, we don't need to spend a lot of time talking about how good Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant are. It's kind of water beneath the bridge. We know how good those guys are. Now, and last season, the issue that they ran into was it just kind of tried to out-talent teams um, and, and out-talent, and they thought their talent would just bring them um, bring them to the NBA Finals, and they, they found out the hard way about that. So, I mean, I just have more of a – this is this team has bad vibes. Um, <laughs> Offseason, you know, Steve Nash, um, you know, Sean – Steve Nash coaching for his life. Um, you know, I think Joe Sy, the owner of the Brooklyn Nets, gave um, Sean Marks a, you know, stamp of approval um, for his job. But, you know, I think just with the entire offseason, you know, KD doing his whole crying, um, crying thing were to I'm um, taking the page out of the Bradley Bill book, um, you know, on that side. But I just have, you know, a lot for this team is going to need to a lot of the team is going to need to go right. Um, for them to win a championship, I believe, around the edges, around the margins. But starting off for this team, like, who, who's the leader on this team, Raz? I mean, it's about to be Royce O'Neal. But, I mean, right, <laughs> from giving, giving, uh, giving everything that I can see, I mean. And we are in problematic water, if, if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it looks like it's Kyrie Irving, uh, you know, unfortunately. Uh, you know, Kevin Durant is the better talent and he's supposed to be, you know, the one that you're you're catering everything around to. But it, it, it looks like this is Kyrie's team just based on personality. Um, so with that being said, Kyrie Irving has to play, um, which has been tough for him the last couple of years. And granted, he also is someone who doesn't stay healthy either, you know, even when it's not, you know, vaccine related or you know, uh, white supremacists attacking the capital related. Like he, he is, he's, he's kind of struggled staying healthy. I think he's played like 70 games, maybe twice in his career. So um, this team will go as he and, and KD goes, but I think he is the the person that has to be on the floor for it all to, to sink. And I know that sounds ridiculous with Kevin Durant on the team, but it, it seems like this team goes as he goes. He's played 70 games three times in 11 seasons. This year is his 12th I was, season. I, I was close. So, yeah. like That's, it's, that's it's pretty like, – yeah. I mean, like I said, um, it's, it's a known quantity of, like, honestly, we, it, it's no telling what Kyrie Irving um, – or like, availability-wise what Kyrie Irving going to get and, um, you know, just how much he's going to play. But, yeah, I mean, so that, that was my number one question for this team. Obviously, my next question – just for this roster in general, um, is is defense. You know, I think there's going to. Um, I'm I'm a huge Ben Simmons fan. That's that remains um, somebody that I am um, entirely you know high on. Um, probably higher than um, you know the consensus. You know, I kind of feel like, like I said, this um, it, it's going to be fun to see him back on the court. Hopefully, um, you know, I mean, I don't know what what it, like whether it was some mental health stuff that he was struggling with. Um, hopefully he's in a better place and he's able to really, you know, capitalize on it because like, like I said, theoretically the fit and, and, and what he's going to bring for this team is exactly what they need. And, you know, Ben Simmons is an all defense type of player. He's a, he's a, um, at his best when he is clicking on all cylinders, he's also, you know, a possible defensive player of the year type of talent. So um, what he does bring should unlock a lot. Um, Nets last season um, had a 112 defensive rating, which was 20th um, for the season last year. And obviously a lot of injuries. Um, KD missed time. Kyrie missed time. Um, Joe Harris missed time. Um, really never had a consistent center, which is still a glaring issue on his team. But, like, that's that's the other thing for us. Um, what did I say? What, what was the over-under for, for the Nets this season? Was it 50? 50 and a half via DraftKings, of course. I don't know how you bet that number. I mean, it's tough. You got to count on a lot of a lot of maybes that have shown you that it's a lot really of wild a maybe. cards. It's really a maybe. Like we don't know. Like we haven't seen Ben Simmons play in however long. Kyrie's never healthy, and KD might ask for a trade again mid season. Like I don't like what are what are we doing with this team? If you're really gonna bet fit, because if you're gonna bet over fifty and a half, you have to have supreme confidence in everything clicking. 
based on talent alone, yeah, sure. But we've we've noticed that health, availability, and mental health has played a big part in this team's downfall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like 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 I did say. So I mean, um, just just getting a little bit more into the team though, Raz. For for you at least, um, what are some of the concerns or just questions? Um, I think getting into, I think thinking about some of the lineup combinations that um, they're going to be able to play, um, you know, I think the Steve Nash thing, um, do I think Steve Nash is like a, you know, top half coach in the league? No. Do I think Steve Nash is the reason why this team um, completely faltered and, you know, just, um, you know, broke a pe- broke apart by every seam this season? Not at all. I, I think, you know, blaming him for everything, um, is going too far. I think uh, regardless of whether you think he is a good coach or not, you got to kind of assume, um, you know, coaches like players can improve. Um, I think Jason Kidd is a pretty good example for Steve Nash in terms of, you know, struggling at two different, you know, situations early, originally with the Nets, um, and then also with those you know, early um, Giannis Bucks teams. In the last season, when he got to um, to the Mavericks, it kind of seemed like he was hitting all the uh, all the right buttons and and you know pushing all the right pieces, uh, putting the pieces where it needed to be for that you know that Mavs team. So that's kind of hope for Steve Nash. Obviously, Steve Nash as a player was one of um, he did not he was not a Hall of Famer because of his athleticism. So you kind of have to hope that um, he's able to also improve on that. But at the same time, we just go back to the bad vibes portion of this team, and it's just like. Like, it's going to be really awkward in that locker room, it feels like. It's kind of, um, you know, is Steve Nash really the type of leader that's going to be able to, um, you know, I think another team that has, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, has had a tumultuous offseason and there's a lot of, you know, sound. And we speak about, like, the the Phoenix Suns, and you have an actual leader, like a guy like Monty Williams on that team, who, you know, if there's anybody who's going to be able to, uh, you know, get them through the tough times and get everybody locked in, like, I don't have any concerns about Monty Williams being able to do that. Steve Nash, on the other hand, you know, remains remains to be seen um, what he does. But, I mean, just looking at this roster and, and lineup combinations, um, you know, what are, what are you feeling about them um, on that? What do you think their best lineups are going to be? And, I mean, actually, actually before, before we even do get into that, I mean, I think the other issue with this team and, you know, you have Kyrie Irving, you have – um, a guy like Kevin Durant in their primes on your team, and you're expected to be a title contender. And, you know, I think the glaring issue on this team right now is the center position. You know, I think Nick Claxton is – Nick Claxton is solid. I was a, a huge fan of, of Nick Claxton um, at UGA. Um, he is an extremely, you know, versatile – he's one of those um, – one of the – I think if you just look at like four or five type, he's one of the most fleet of foot, you know, defensive, you know, bigs in the league. His ability to really, um, you know, pressure ball handlers um, and recover is something that does place him in the top quartile of just defenders. And I do think he's a he's a pretty solid defender. If you watch the series against Boston, um, he, he wasn't really much of a deterrence for guys like Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum kind of um, – I remember putting um, – Shout out to the draft season podcast, um, you know the, the NBA reels. Make sure you do go and check that. Um, go watch the go watch some of the Tatum highlights um, in that round one, and you know he was just kind of shooting over the top of a guy like Nick Claxton. And as much as I do like Nick Claxton, he still is a undersized five. Um, you know, probably somebody who, you know, he can't. He has no type of floor spacing. Um, at all, um, <laughs> like he's not somebody who is going to um, space the floor. Um, and although he does have you know some good size, he is pretty light. I'm not sure exactly what he um is. He, yeah, he's weighed at um, he's listed at 215 pounds. Um, so like I think that just build that's a lot of matchup problems, you know, particularly if you want to look at in a a team that you know, you know teams that you're gonna have to see in the playoffs. We're talking about you know, the Sixers, that's that's easy food for Embiid. Um, Giannis is, like, they still don't have their Giannis stopper on this team. So, I mean, like, I, I think they also did sign Markeith Morris recently. Um, Markeith Morris ain't it either. 
Um, no, you know, not gonna help. <laughs> he might be able to get. He might be able to give you five to ten good minutes, but anything more than that, and he's gonna be you know overextended about what you really need for him. So, what do you what do you make of the center position? And you know, go back to what I asked previously about just the rosters and ros- I mean the rotations and um, you know how like the, the lineup combinations they'll be able to throw out. I mean, I think in terms of the center position, they're they're in trouble. Um, I mean, I, I like Dayron Sharp, you know, as a backup big. Um, he's he's a, a he's an X factor man. <laughs> he's a, he's a, but that's what I'm, that's the that's the issue. Like he's the X factor for them. So I mean, he's probably their best rebounder. Um, Nick Claxton okay. is probably their best their best rim protector. But you would want that in the same player. Um, I think I mean you can't put them on the court at the same time. So it's one of those things where you're gonna really be subtracting either way you go with who you're playing. Um, they don't have the bigs to guard any of the premier bigs in the Eastern Conference, so they are going to struggle on the boards. I think in, in in on the other side of that coin, right, if this team is clicking, not many teams in the East are going to be able to score with them at all, right? Like KD, Kyrie, um, any semblance of a healthy Joe Harris and Seth Curry, like that shooting is incredible. Um, Patty Mills, you know, he's he's Patty Mills. Like, you saw what that is. And if he doesn't have to play all 80 games, you know, as a starter, and he can give you his spurt minutes off of the bench with Kyrie leading that charge at that position, Patty Mills is going to be super effective for this team. Um, Rachel O'Neal, TJ Warren. I mean, TJ Warren is a bucket, as you guys know. Like, he, if he's healthy, he gives them somebody that's instant offense off the bench. So in terms of just their lineups, they have a lot of interchangeable parts, right? And I think they're going to be looking to use Ben Simmons in sort of that 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 Draymond role that the the Warriors were able to use, um, you know, all of this time where he's he may not play center, but you know he he's going to be in in the pinch where they're going to need he's going to run that five, but he's a five that can handle the ball and pass and defend, and then you're going to throw him out there with some of the best scorers this game's ever seen. So you know, Kyrie, Kevin Durant, and then. You know, if you really need something else in there, you can go with TJ Warren, you know, or Joe Harris, or Seth. Like they have so many interchangeable scoring lineups. I think it's going to come down to the closing, how they close games. What's going to be your best lineup to get you over the finish line? So it, they're going to have to sacrifice something, and it's obviously going to be defense. So I think they're going to try and run people up the court. Yeah, like like you said, I think that's a, that's a pretty good point about um, bad at the five. Um, obviously, with Embiid. And, you know, his time, all of his time spent um, with the Sixers, it it really wasn't something that we did explore. Now, like, Ben isn't necessarily – I think Ben is one of the most disruptive, you know, point of attack actual defenders in the league. And it was just kind of incredible um, to watch when – whenever they would, like, switch something up and say, all right, we're throwing Ben Simmons on um, whoever your lead ball handler or or wing guy is. And, you know, there's so many – there's so many examples of Ben Simmons just completely changing or taking guys out of their rhythm. So yeah, I'm not, I think in a pinch, you, you are correct. I think, yeah, getting into like the closing lineup, Ben at the five is probably something that they're going to have to experiment with because yeah, like, like we said, just in terms of playoff matchups, you know, Nick Claxton, um, a pretty good backup big, I believe. I think you just asking too much for him. Um, you know, if, if you're asking them to start, if you ask him to play like over like even 28 minutes, 30, 30 minutes a game, you know, I think that's where some of the um, offensive, yeah, there's going to be issues on the boards. And I think a lot of the bigger bigs in the league will be able to take advantage of it. That like uh, Nick Claxton there. But yeah, I think a, cl- a closing lineup of, let's say, like Ben, KD, Royce O'Neal, uh, Joe Harris, and Kyrie Irving. Um, pretty interesting. You know, I would say that's, like I said, they're going to be able to score. And that's a lineup that gives you. Um, I think KD, KD's a good defender. You know, I think it can wax and wane just in terms of how hard um, or how much energy he is exerting on that end, which, you know, you can only exert so much energy and you can only give some, only the true elite guys really give you 100% on both sides of the ball. But it's not the it's not the worst fit. I do think, you know, defensively asking a lot from KD to really, he, like KD defensively, is and, and this is not to say Katie's a bad defender. It's just as he gets older, and it's kind of the same issue with LeBron. KD is no spring chicken. How old is KD? We've been watching KD his whole career. I think KD is one of these guys. How old is he? 34, maybe? I think he's 34. Yeah, K- KD is one of these guys to where, for, for us at least, for as I feel like, we can say 
33. He'll be 34 end of this month. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of these guys that we could say we we actively watched his entire career. Um, from from I remember watching KD at Texas. You know, like I remember the early Bron days, but like I'm I'm 28, but I remember the early Bron days. But it wasn't like I was sitting down watching every Bron game. Like it was it was like towards like maybe like years two three in the league for Bron. But KD from day one, you know that that olden KD class we've been tapped in for him. So like yeah, KD KD's been around for a minute, bro. So you know the defensive. How much energy is he going to really um, give you on defense? It's going to, you know, be interesting to see. You know, I – KD played 37 minutes a game last season, which, you know, I think he's a – and he's a gamer. He does – he what did he tweet? He was just like, yo, just leave me out there to die. And and that's – for for as much as KD is in the – you know, he goes viral for, you know, being – I guess the Larry David of the NBA is a is a pretty <laughs> yeah that's kind of that's kind of his role in the league of just a cur like KD is just like KD's not even that old but he's just really curmudgeon-y and and you know he doesn't necessarily see things the way anybody else is and a lot of times and and, and shout out to any of the curb your enthusiasm fans out there it's a similar element to where a lot of stuff you can't even necessarily say KD's wrong about stuff he just goes about he just goes about things the entirely wrong way. Yeah, he some of those you, you gotta it's, it's all about timing. Um he has some of the worst timing the league's ever seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I can't I can't really like I can't really make out of it. Like on a night to night basis, you kind of want a little bit more wing depth than actually, you know, expecting KD to be that guy that they're gonna need him to be and play as many minutes. But you know, KD is a Martian and we are going to enjoy KD the basketball player. Um, as long as we do have him, but yeah, like like I said, just until, I'm going right back to to Dayron Sharp Raz because I do think he like he's he's such an important you know part of this team. I mean, we'll see if the Nets do trade for somebody. I know I mentioned it offline. A guy like Jakob Pertle, who I feel like is probably one of the better you know bigs in this league. I would definitely give up a lottery protected first round pick uh, for a guy like Jakob Pertle if I was Sharp Marks and to get a a legitimate you know big like him who's one of the best rim protectors in the league and somebody who would just give that stability, um, you know, allow a guy like Claxton to be in his natural position, allow Ben to really play up. You know, I, you kind of want Ben defending more wings and guards, you know, consistently than really guarding fives all the time. I think, you know, using him on fives might not be using him to the best of his ability, even though in a pinch and maybe in a closing lineup, that's the best way to use him. But yeah, I think they are even I, I pulled up his, G League stats last season, and he basically averaged uh 18 and 10, basically two two and a half blocks in the games he played in the G League. And like I, I think Dayron is somebody who's incredibly talented. I know we talked about him um pre-draft a couple years back for him, Raz, but but yeah, he's one of these guys who he can pass the ball. Um, he has upside as a rim protector. They are banking a lot on him, and you know, say he um doesn't turn out to be that guy this year you know it's going to create a massive hole in their rotation that if it's not you know they're going to kind of we'll see that's kind of something that they're probably going to have to sure up by the trade deadline for for the guy uh, for, for the nets but yeah that's that's just another thing to see so i mean yeah i guess uh i think what else what else um stands out to you raz what other questions do we have on on this Nets team before we get to the over unders I mean, the Nets are a boring team, bro. It's like we – I don't want to talk – there's a million questions about them, but they're very – like, I don't want to watch these guys. Um, they're, they're, they're a good team, man, and it's it, – it, the questions that it comes down to is, are they going to be here? Are they going to be available to play? Who's going to play? Because if they're there, we're going to be talking about them come May and maybe June. So it's like – it's all at this point now speculation because we just have to see if the pieces are going to be on the court. Yes. Um, but other, I think the last last note just about the rotation and team in general. Uh, Patty Mills was not good last year. Joe Harris had a <laughs> down year, I would say. And, you know, Seth Curry is not um, the best defender. He's pretty small. Kind of feels like one of those guys might have to go between – I know they re-upped uh, – Patrick Mills, Patty Mills um, during um, the offseason. So probably not him as I, as he probably can't even be traded for the first half of the season. So maybe closer to the deadline. But, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how the Patty Mills, Joe Harris, and Seth Curry, you know, just trio kind of works out because 
when you have Ben Simmons on his team, I would suppose Ben is going to play a lot of backup point on on this team for them. So he's probably going to be the de facto backup point. So that kind of just leaves, you know, Patty Mills, Joe Harris, and Seth Curry in that off ball slot. Now, Seth Curry, Patty Mills, both bad defenders, I would say. Joe Harris is probably closer to average, but I think the Joe Harris they got last year was probably a below average defender, wing defender, and he's not really somebody who is going to deter a lot of the best scorers in the league, but he does. um, He has good enough length, and he plays hard enough, but it'll be interesting to see what happens because I do think one of those guys might would be the trade piece along with possibly, um, you know, some of the future picks that they might have to see who else, whether it's, you know, an additional center or, you know, some additional wing depth that the Nets could actually bring. So, yeah, I think a guy like Kessler, uh, Kessler Edwards is going to be somebody who is going to be interesting to see. Can he, can he give them any minutes? Um, you know, some more, you know, consistent time for that team. Um, so there's a couple of, like, like you did say, yeah, Raz, this team is going to be, it could go really good. They could win 55 games. Um, they could also spurt and, you know, be in the 45 game area that they were in last season. So, I mean, we could we could wrap it here. What was the official win to I mean um over under one once more? Fifty and a half. Title odds plus seven hundred. What are you going with? <sighs> I would never bet it, but um I I'll take I'll take the under here just because I'm I don't trust them to play. Yeah, I think in a for for a team like this. Seating doesn't matter. They don't have a home court advantage one. <laughs> like that's that's one thing. Like there's no home court advantage one. If they are clicking on all cylinders by the time the playoff comes, like seating, legit, yeah, the seating doesn't really matter for them. Like I said, they could be a um, a six, seven, eight seed and legitimately, you know, strike fear into the top seeds in the East. A lot of question marks for this team. Too many variables, too many things for me to honestly, realistically bet on that number. I think obviously they have the potential to go over, but you know, I think you know, even KD's had a couple years of injury um, stuff that has you know led him to miss you know 15, 20 games. I think at this point of his career, I think at best we could probably pencil him in for I would say like sixty five games is a, is a good number for KD. You know, with with injuries, I think he's going to miss like like you know fifteen games or so. Um, hopefully, and and if it's anything more than that, I think the floor on this team severely drops off. Obviously, we, you brought up the points about Kyrie, and you know, hopefully, I, I haven't seen any recent updates about Ben Simmons. I know he had the surgery. I think they said he they're expecting him to be ready for training camp. Yeah, I mean, he 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 got a. He's supposed to be ready for training camp. He got his mental right, so you know, barring another setback, he's supposed to be on the court. Yeah, so um, give, give me give me the under. I'm taking the under for this next team. Obviously, you know, it's just so much that can go wrong for this team that I can't really advise uh, that number. You know, this team is kind of put up a shut-up time for these guys. Um, but it remains to be seen. They just had one of the craziest off-seasons. You know, I think KD, know, or KD realized at a certain point that this team was the best, you know, best avenue for him to actually win a, a title this season. But, you know, when the going and, – and just to go back to how we started off this breakdown, like, can, can this team, you know, go through any type of adversity and actually make it? Like, that's – like, that's kind of like for as talented as they are, you know, a bet on – I think I would rather bet on their title odds than, than the over 51 or, or over 50 wins, to be honest. Because, yeah, I think, you know, if they are able to get everything ready by the end of the season – yeah, they would really be scary to, to actually win. But in terms of a regular season team that honestly should run through or, or should just out talent so many other teams, yeah, too too many, too, too many variables to put your hard earned dollar on for me. Yeah, nah. I would I would advise not betting it, but you know, Vegas is Vegas and they're gonna get the money out of somebody. It just won't be me. We will end it there. This is our Brooklyn Nets 2022-2023 season preview again. Yeah, let us know. 
let, let us know right. in the comments. You know, are you taking that over? Are you taking that under? What are your expectations for that next season? And if you made it this far again, do us that favor. Like, subscribe, five stars, rate, comment on all platforms, especially the YouTube. This is the Draft Season Podcast. We'll be back.